the Blue Lake Dam Expansion Project. A testament to determination, perseverance, and know-how of a small community making a huge investment for its future. In Sitka on Baranoff Island in southeastern Alaska, we get a little over 200 days a year with measurable rainfall. So, so we have rain. We have this incredible abundant resource. You don't live in Sitka, Alaska if you don't learn to love rain. And we love our rain. One of the things we love about our rain nowadays is that when we turn on the lights or when we click on our electric heat, that's a gift to us from the rain. Right on top of our heads we have water and we have the ability to have hydro, which is when we rank them for environmentally sensitive energy sources, hydro is very hard to beat. Sitka is a water community, we're an island. Uh, we depend on our water, our commercial fishing industry depends on it, our uh, electricity now comes from water. Uh, we have incredible potential to grow because of our water, both in the fishing economy as well as the um, business economy. Hydro holds the key, and what we're seeing happen here in Southeast, um, you're really leading. You're leading the state in so many different ways. In 2012, Sitkins voted overwhelmingly to expand the hydro system. After 10 years of advanced planning, two and a half years of construction, Sitkins and the city of Sitka have just successfully completed the largest public works project in the city's history. Sitka Assembly gave final unanimous approval to begin work at Blue Lake. The dam is one of two hydro projects generating electricity for Sitka. Increasing the height of the dam by 83 feet and installing three new turbines will increase the hydro capacity by over 27 percent, further reducing the need for expensive diesel generation. Today's a, an epic day, a major milestone. We've received assembly approval to approach the bond bank for issuance of a $46 million bond to continue funding for the Blue Lake project. Um, the raising of the height of the dam is going to be a, make a huge difference for the citizens of Sitka, and it's going to be a huge difference for our economy. So um, we need that power so that we can have some growth in our community. Let's get going! <laughs> for us, the future is hydroelectricity. And our forefathers knew that, that this was a good solution for us, living in this rainforest with this alpine lake. So we're doing it. We're taking care of the environment here. We're making sure that our salmon are protected because this is not a salmon stream. So our fishermen are going to continue to fish in clean waters and fish will be protected. So we're doing a good thing both now and on into the future. This uh, stream was intentionally uh, chosen because it's not a salmon river. Uh, Sawmill Creek has a few pinks, it has a few returning steelhead, but all of that take place in that very short run of sea level water, and then Blue Lake rises dramatically, and no, uh, you know, our salmon that we think of, our uh, coho and sockeye, none of those uh, fish return up streams like this to spawn, and so, what we've done is we've captured this remarkable hydroelectric potential. We've powered this town for years to come, and we've done no harm to the salmons that are such an important part of the Thomas National Forest. When engineers designed the Blue Lake project over 50 years ago, they had planned for a third phase where the Blue Lake Dam could be raised by 25 feet. We were surveying in 1952 that we left Blue Lake and our campsite on a little island on Friday night. And in the two days, the lake without a dam rose, very easily rose six feet. Well, all three of us were re had uh, some relationship with working on the old, uh, on the Blue Lake Dam, the existing dam. And Looking forward to seeing the 
feet of dam that's going to go on top of it. Now, at the completion, Sitka has pushed the engineering envelope and constructed an 83 feet dam expansion, as well as a new powerhouse with three new turbines. This increase doubles the output of the original Blue Lake Dam and powerhouse. The project was built as an adjunct facility to the uh, pulp mill that was here. And the pulp mill consumed about a third of the basin water. And the, the powerhouse, the hydroelectric facility, used the other two thirds. Well, when the, when the mill was shut down in 1993, there's now more water available for generation than the existing hydro project can, can use. And so it was what we call capacity limited. It had to run almost at full load all year long just to use the water. The project now involves the construction of the expansion of this facility, which means a new powerhouse with twice the generating capability and a raise of the existing dam so that there's more head and more water storage to provide both more energy and more power for the community. This dam has potential energy by nature of its elevation. This source of potential energy can be turned into electrical power using a water turbine. The water turbine will take the water from the dam and then deliver it into the sea. During that process, it is able to develop electric power and this electric power will be used by the local utility to provide heating and lighting for the houses in Sitka and in the outlying areas. The Blue Lake expansion has two major elements. One, building a new powerhouse with three new 5.3 megawatt turbines and two, raising the existing project dam by 83 feet. Together, these two actions will increase the existing electrical system's annual capacity by 27 percent. This secures the future for hydro as the primary source of electricity for Sitka's 9,000 residents and businesses. Uh, we've reached an important moment on this project. We've placed the first concrete blocks down on the dam and we've made the first concrete pours at the new powerhouse. Uh, construction wise we've been about six months in the process. It's taken a lot of cooperation with the city and the different agencies. A lot of man hours have gone in to get to this point. Yeah this is the exciting part of the, the job when we get to see get to see the concrete go down on the dam and start to see it come up. The Blue Lake expansion is an enlargement and a modernization of the existing Blue Lake hydroelectric facility. Well, the dam is like a, th well, it's like a third or half the value of the project. The other two thirds is the powerhouse and the changes to the tunnel. So the new powerhouse is bigger. It's 15 megawatts instead of seven. It has three units instead of two, so the units can be dispatched into the system more effectively and more efficiently. It's got modern equipment, uh, better capacity, and a much better fit to the community's electrical needs. The 83 feet dam rise is being placed by the general contractor Barnard Construction Company. Since the only access to the dam is from one side of the canyon, the largest crane in Alaska at over 600 tons is being utilized to place the concrete on the dam. It's a, a monumental effort to get all of the, the men and materials over the other side of the dam to make these concrete placements. The final pour is delicate business. Workers with the contractor, Bernard Construction, operated a crane the length of a football field with a giant bucket of concrete swinging at its end. The completed 223 feet tall Blue Lake Dam now boasts two spillways since the original spillway was not removed but instead built on top of. Roughly two miles downstream where Sawmill Creek empties into Silver Bay, the concrete structure for the new powerhouse took shape. 
Work on the project's new powerhouse was equally as critical to the community's energy independence. Gilbert Gilks and Gordon Limited has been hired to design and oversee the installation of the turbines in the powerhouse. The internationally established manufacturing company, based in the UK, has designed three Gilks Francis units for the Blue Lake expansion project. Each machine is commissioned to run at 5 megawatts with a potential to run at 8 megawatts depending on the future demands from the city. The support from the community has been tested but continues to remain high even through brief outages during commissioning and switching their drinking water for three months to a subpar water source. It's really unusual to build a treatment plant completely for treating water for two months and then to take it all away again. And so what we were looking for is the most cost effective way to meet regulations and have the highest quality water that we could and still have it fit in this pretty small site and not cost a whole lot. So there's a lot of juggling there and this is what we've come up with is the best compromise for meeting all those criteria. Shutting down the Blue Lake uh, turbines for the very last time. <laughs> so today marks the end of an era. The old Blue Lake powerhouse has now been permanently shut down and we are entering into the generation outage which is a period of 63 days where we will tie in all the new equipment and bring the new powerhouse online. So the project culminated with uh, a very intense period at the end of the construction called the generation outage where the existing Blue Lake power plant was shut down and then a series of connections of the water pen stock, the water tunnel, the electric transmission line, those connections were all made to the new power plant that's behind me here in the, in the background. What we hope to do is bring this unit up uh, in a, uh, a manual sequence for the first time in its in his life, so pretty special. Good. There was a, a very high level of planning. A lot of the equipment was tested uh, very completely prior to the generation outage, and the work went well. We we had expected at least uh, two or three outages of the community where there would be an electrical blackout of the city because the equipment wasn't exactly set up right or not uh, um, connected properly. We didn't have any. All right. Take one. Wild stuff at a hydro plant, always. Always crazy. <laughs> what are the things happening? Uh, you, this is a brand new machine, so there's all sorts of things that can rub and, uh, and touch and, and heat up. So when you turn it for the first time, you're always listening for that. It's a testament to how uh, well organized the work was and the quality of the work by the different uh, parties involved, the contractor, the engineer, the construction manager, and the city staff. So we ended very successfully with a bang, a safe startup, a startup on time, actually a little ahead of schedule. And uh, the community now has a very robust generating resource that you can use for more economic development in the city. It displaces what would have been diesel fire generation and it uh, allows a good future for the city and borough of Sitka and the, and the community here on Baranoff Island. How do you build a successful hydro dam expansion? You do it with ingenuity, perseverance, and collaboration. Courage. It takes commitment, caring, not only about each other, but about your environment. Today's a special day. We're dedicating the Blue Lake Hydro project, the dam and the powerhouse. And we're going to have a ceremony here shortly. There's a lot of people and the powerhouse is open. We started this process literally in 2007. And here it is, the end of 2014. And we're, we're wrapping up. The Blue Lake expansion project was performed by suppliers and contractors that were selected on the best value basis. I think future generations will say this was one of the most uh, insightful and fortuitous things that our 
community leadership did to ensure our sustainability into the future. I really see that this project should be the template for how to do work with all the federal and local and state agencies to make something like this work out. And the city, your community ought to be very uh, proud of the people you've had involved on the project. Working together with this team is by far the pinnacle of my career, which ends today. <laughs> Here in Southeast, it is all about hydro. So what we can do to help build this out, to build a future not only for Sitka, but clearly for the Southeastern region, and really for the future of our state. It's about affordable, accessible, clean, diverse, and secure sources of energy supply.